set now to make his way to the cage, Henry of K. Corrales. Two weeks ago tonight, Henry Corrales was in training, training for a fight that didn't exist. He saw a tweet from Patricio Pitbull saying he needed a new opponent. He stared at his phone, and Henry Corrales read it less as a tweet and more of an e-bite. And within seconds, he had texted his manager. Within minutes, the wheels were in motion. And the dynamic Californian, who dropped 10 of his first 12 opponents, and when you spend time with him, drops more dudes per sentence than anyone on the roster, now has the chance of a lifetime. Yeah, he does. Stepping up against the former champ, the attitude he has to have is on just a fly in the ointment, the monkey in the wrench. He's not going to show up and just get a check. He wants to deal, derail the comeback of Patricio Pitbull. Jimmy's keys to victory brought to you by Warcraft Two Worlds, one home, Warcraft in theaters June 10th. Footwork is key. He doesn't want to stand in front of the heavy punching Patricio Pitbull and fight from long distance. He has the rage advantage. Don't fight in the phone booth. Now making his way to the cage, Patricio Pitbull. The last time Patricio Pitbull walked down that ramp, he was holding the world title, which meant more than anything to him. It defined him. He feels MMA history is defined by the champions, but he went home without that title, but with a newborn son. And what defines him has changed. He wants that world title back, not in place of fatherhood, but because of it, his son now an inspiration. Look at those numbers. Patricio Pitbull made his Bellator debut as an unknown 22-year-old right here at Mohegan Sun. He won his world title at Mohegan Sun and returns tonight, as you see, the all-time winningest fighter in Bellator history. I'll say it before, I'll say it again, one of the hardest punchers in all of mixed martial arts. Jimmy's Keys brought to you by Warcraft 2 Worlds, one home, Warcraft in theaters, June 10th. And you know, we say it all the time, use the whole arsenal. He has great leg kicks, great takedown, great jujitsu. Needs to get those other tools going tonight and beware the first round. Henry Corrales, a very fast starter anyway, but he didn't have a camp. Expect him to throw everything into the first round. Pitbull has not only been in some wars over the last couple of years, fighting for and eventually winning that world title. He's been a five round type fighter, now going back to three. The Tale of Tape brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. Look at the height and reach advantage for Henry Corrales. He needs to keep Patricio Pitbull at a distance or it's going to be a short night. Bellator MMA presented tonight by Miller Lite now moves to the featherweight division set for three five-minute rounds. It's brought to you by Warcraft, two worlds, one home. Don't miss Warcraft in theaters June 10. And tonight it's brought by Mohegan Sun. When it's your time to shine, come see us. And now first introducing the blue corner at five foot eight, weighing in 146 pounds. His professional record, 12 wins with two losses. Fighting out of La Mirada, California, introducing Henry O.K. Corrales. And across the cage, his adversary tonight fights out of the rep corner at five foot five. He weighed in the same 146 pounds. Always impressive as a professional. He stands with 24 victories, just three defeats. Haley from Natal Rio Grande, the Norte Brasil. Introducing the former Bellator featherweight world go, champion, Patricio Pitbull. In charge of the action, your referee, Kevin McDonald. All right, guys, three rounds under the unified rules of mixed martial arts. We went over those rules in the back. Any questions, Patricio? Any questions, Henry? All right, if you want touch gloves now, come on swinging. Patricio Pitbull, so much respect for Henry Corrales taking this fight on short notice. Ready to fight? Ready to fight? Let's go! The fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. Cheers, it's Miller time. 
question really coming into this fight. All of us who've been around for all of Pitbull's career, the last few fights, even the one he's won, he's taken some serious beatings. A lot of guys were never the same after that. His wins as champion against Daniel Strauss and against Daniel Weichel were monster comeback wins. Talked about he usually fights five round fights, get ready for a three rounder. He always looks for the finish. I don't see it tactically making that much of a difference. Morales had talked about him losing his teeth. That happened early in that great fight with Emmanuel Sanchez last September, and he fought his way through it. He gutted through it. You talked to him the other day, you asked, What kind of mouthpiece were you wearing? And the answer is not the white one. Yeah, boil and bite, never wear those. Fight a professional fight, get him fitted. His front teeth are gone. Which he was happy to display. You know, wear it, wear it with pride. Can't wait for May 14th in San Jose. Will Davis and King Mo, remember that fight didn't happen in the tournament final at the inaugural Dynamite because of the injury to King Mo, who was coming off an outrageously impressive performance, winning the inaugural Rising Grand Prix, winning three fights in two days. Strong nice lead right by Corrales. Morales taking his time, being a little more patient than we saw in his last two fights. Yeah, he got out there against Daniel Strauss, and he was at a huge event in St. Louis. There were all these people out there. He was looking out in the crowd and saying, wow, this is awesome. It was an adrenaline-type yes. fight, and against a veteran like Daniel Strauss, it's not going to get you there. Earlier tonight here at Mohegan Sun, we saw Chris Honeycutt coming back after his first loss, a knockout loss, getting a win over Matt Secor. He was tentative at first. Trucio did not get to see his brother fight, which is very rare. Tricky fighting last Saturday night in Italy as Patricio was on his way here. He was in the air. Mount Pitbull is so compact and so powerful. He gets it on double leg. It's hard to stop him. You remember the spectacular knockout of Eichel, but he has finished nine men on the ground, including the great comeback title defense win over Daniel Strauss, and he very nearly did it again in that fight of the year nice. candidate last year. Look at that mount transition right to it. Fortunate enough to grapple with Patricio Pitbull. It's like grappling a fire hydrant. Unbelievably strong. And you went for a choke, and what happened? Yeah, I can't, he had no neck. He couldn't get anything. But incredible pressure, incredible strength. And a great Look at arm him trying through. Arm triangle position. He's got Corrales in some trouble here. Uh, smart Steps move. over to full mount when he move. didn't have it. Yep. It's a veteran. Now he's going for it on the other side. Might be a problem is he doesn't have room because the cage is keeping him from circling. And he might be strong enough to finish. He goes back to mount. Back into full mount. He didn't have it on one side. He thought he had a better look on the other side, but as you said, ran out of room. One of the big differences when you move up in belts, they know when it's done. A blue belt will hang on to something too long. A brown belt, black belt, they let it go and they move back positionally. That's what Pitbull's doing. Got a short elbow in. He wants to pull Corrales off the fence. That's been his kryptonite so far. The fence has prevented him from getting his jiu-jitsu going. Corrales survives. Corrales was 12-0 when he stepped into the cage in St. Louis with Daniel Strauss. He's been happy to step up in competition. Great demeanor about him. It's like, dude, yeah, bring it on, absolutely. This is California as it gets. I say that with affection. Thank you, thank you. The goal being more measured. <laughs> the crowd responding to them being a little more measured. Trucio's debut in this building, his world title win over Pat Curran in this building. Now trying to take the first step back towards the featherweight world title fight with Daniel Strauss. Daniel Weiss is going to have something to say about that. Curran and Karahani next month in Boise. I think tactically, Pitbull was expecting Corrales to move forward a little bit more. Now that he's not, he's standing back waiting. It's, it's forcing Pitbull to fight a different kind of fight than he was expecting. That would be my guess so far. Tactically a good round for Patricio Pitbull, but couldn't get the finish.
It did not seem tactical. No, he said something about his ribs. He's kept pointing to his ribs. I think he might be hurt. Remember, he was not active at all in the last 30 or 40 seconds of round one. He's not a fighter. There's not a lot of movement, head movement anyway with Patrice here. Never had a serious rib injury. You can barely breathe, let alone throw a punch. All right, let's go with the premise that there is something wrong with the ribs of Patricio. How does that change what he wants to do here? Or can do? It, it changes everything. It's so hard to do anything without, and you know, when you have a serious rib injury, like I said, it's hard to even breathe, let alone throw a decent punch. You talk about the measured pace. He could just be waiting for that one shot. Dave Rickles, looking forward to seeing him back in the Bellator cage. Big win over Bobby Cooper. February in Kansas and of course Daniel Strauss one of the fights of the year and meant so very much to him such a devoted dad taking the time away from his daughter to train and eventually win that world title from Patricio in November in St. Louis. Is Pitbull moving to you like a guy whose ribs are hurt? He might be. He doesn't move a whole lot anyway. Right. That's the difference. But he tends to throw with a lot more authority. You saw him land a right hand earlier in this round and not a lot behind it. He doesn't throw soft punches. Now he should have that first round in the bank, though, right? Yeah, I think so, but you never know. We saw a very shaky decision here earlier with Brent Primus going 7 0. Debut of Bellator kickboxing coming up after the Andre Koroskoff Ben Henderson main event. Certainly isn't being as aggressive as we normally see him. Like he doesn't have a, you know, a lot of confidence in his punches, which he normally does. Switching stances now. You hear the fans' reaction, but they don't know what we think we may know. They very well changed the dynamic of this fight, and we'll see. If Patricio, former world champion, finds a champion's way to survive. saving him right now is I think Corrales is fighting at a very measured pace. It could be the, the late notice. He's trying to conserve his energy, but he's not pressing the advantage that he may or may not have. His tip was not 100%. It certainly doesn't seem as if Corrales senses anything is off with Patricia. He's a real champion not going to bring their game face every time, but he's doing some good, uh, some good work counter-punching from the outside. I think he's been the more effective striker in this round so far. See, that's the time usually Pitbull yes. has you against the fence. He would press that advantage. He's not doing that. See the trickle of blood on the nose of Corrales. But the drama here is with Patricio. Listen to that jump knee. We talked about to Inyo Santos. That's how he knocked him out. Shots. Everything hurts. Everything hurts. This is where we're getting into dangerous territory. Like we saw with the Santos Primus fight, is that on the feet, you know, obviously until this takedown, I thought Corrales doing the better counter striking, but it's Pitbull moving forward. And I think the judges were seduced by that in the Primus fight. They might be seduced by that in this second round as well. Corrales more effective, but Pitbull the one moving forward. Direction is not cage generalship. No, it is not. One thing he has is a very powerful guillotine, and there it is. Hanging on to San Life, and it's done. Patricio Pitbull finds a way. We talked about his toolkit. There are so many things Patricio Pitbull can do. One of them is submit you. He gets your neck, it is over. There's no space in there. Every Patricio Pitbull fight has its own drama. 25 and three. We talk about his power all the time, but his 10th submission win, nine wins by knockout, 10 by submission.
The replay brought to you by Blackheart Premium Spice Rum, the bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Now Corrales wanted space. He was on the bottom. Look at the, the foot change here. He goes to open guard. His feet go to the hip and he presses off. And that's when Pitbull got his head. Arm in guillotine makes no difference. He is incredibly strong. Look at all the torque he's putting on that. And there's the tap from Corrales. Beautiful finish. Loving the jujitsu tonight. Daniel Strauss and Patricio Pitbull, the only ones to submit Henry Corrales. Did Patricio Pitbull suffer an injury? Jimmy Smith is going to ask him as Patricio Pitbull gets back in line for a featherweight world title shot with a comeback win against Henry Corrales. The former featherweight world champion Patricio Pitbull is back in the win column. Michael C. Williams makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a guillotine choke. Four minutes, nine seconds into round number two. The winner by submission, Patricio Pitbull. And did Patricio Pitbull win this fight with an injury? That we're about to find out as he joins Jimmy Smith. I'm here with your winner, Patricio Pitbull. Patricio. At the end of round one, we caught you pointing to your ribs, some activity in the corner. Were you hurt at the end of round one? No, I was going to go to the end of round one. But he was not very hard. I was able to do the strategy that my corner was asking. In the head, he was a little bit risky, throwing some shots that I didn't expect. As a lot of mata-cobra, I didn't come to a shot aligned with a boxer normal. And I was able to do the strategy that I was able to do to finalize my opponent. I was do well. I, I did hear it a little bit of, uh, from the Reds. He was throwing some awkward blows. He was throwing the overhand right, but I listened to my corner, and I was able to take him down and eventually get the submission. Everybody talks about your knockout power, your finishing ability. What does it mean to let them know you still have that jujitsu, the tenth submission of your career? I need the same jujitsu. After my loss by Strauss, I am prepared for everything. I am a complete fighter. And I'm here to be more complete than all the vision. Strauss, I'm waiting for you, bro. I'm going to take my belt back, bro. Prepare. Be ready. Be ready. You heard it, Daniel Strauss. He's coming back. Patricio Pitbull, ladies and gentlemen. Is Pitbull Strauss 4 on the horizon? And can they top the show they put on in the first three? Win number 25 for Patricio Pitbull against just three decision losses. And he is right back at the top of the list at 145.